This is a Positron, and thanks to Positron and LDO, I'm at my very first first robotics competition. It's a regional competition, and Nomad from the Positron team is an alumni of first robotics. You could actually start seeing these in the pit crews of some of those teams who are building these fantastic robots. In fact, why don't we go see a team right now? My very first first robotics competition with my friend Ella. Hi Ella, um, this is insane. Like this is my first time being in a first robotics competition. Correct me if I'm wrong, this is a regional competition, is, correct? Yes. Is it the first one of the season? This is week two, so there have been a couple before this, but this is the first one we've been able to get into because they're usually packed with people oh. like trying to get in. Oh, I would yeah. imagine, like of all course. the teams. There's thousands, and thousands, tens of thousands of teams, right? Absolutely, Okay, yes. but the team you're on is who? 5813. 5813, okay, well at this point, there's gonna be a lot of people who've been in FIRST Robotics, who are watching. So make sure you leave a comment with your team down below. I think that's fair, right? Absolutely. Because teams love cooperating in this thing, right? Yeah, that's the whole point. That is the whole point. Okay, tell me a little bit about FIRST and what it means to like get a team and build a robot. What, is it, what does that mean to you? What it means to me is I feel like it's an opportunity to really get out there and do things and sort of inspire confidence amongst the youth because I never thought I was a technical person and some days I still think I'm not, but you know, you'll get out there and like do, do things like this, building robots. And you know, it's something you never would get the chance to do otherwise. You didn't think you were very technical, but no, by sir. entering into FIRST Robotics, you, you, you realized you had that spark yeah. for the technical side of it. And even if you don't, you have to find it really fast. Oh, and how fast, did you find it fast? I think so. I've heard the build for this is actually pretty quick, right? Once the season starts. What did it take to build this robot as far as time is concerned? All right, so kickoff day is I think the first Saturday in January where they announce the game and leading up to it, there's a couple hints like, oh, it's going to be a pick and place game where you pick things up and place them. And it's gonna have this many game pieces. So there's a couple things for people to go off and theorize about. But the first Saturday in January is when they show the name of the game, explain all the rules, release everything. And then from there, you just have to go, 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 and design the robot. Wait a minute. So yeah. at the kickoff, you, you don't even know what the competition is until you have the no. kickoff. Which means you can't really plan beforehand. So it's been like six weeks? Yeah. Holy cow. Well, when you, when you say that, it just dawns on me. It, it, this came together in six weeks. Um pretty tired. One of the things that I think is kind of fun to talk about is how 3D printing affects the timetable for what you're building because with 3D printing, you can rapidly make things. Of course. Now you use 3D printing on this. Was it for prototyping or was it for final parts or was it for both? I'd say it's a mix of both. There's okay. a lot of things on this robot right here that have been 3D printed. On, on the competition robot on itself? On the competition robot itself, yes. We've been using it for a couple of years. Like last year, we had pulleys on our shooter that were 3D printed. This year we have some gears. We have what's called the detent right here that's also been 3D printed. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. And we have a lot of mounts for electronics that have been 3D printed. And they need to be because those things need to be, those things are hundreds of dollars right there. Yeah. Which, because we're a community team, we don't have all that much money. So it's really important that those things don't break. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. So those things need to be tight. They need to be secure. And the best way to do that is by 3D printing them. There's still a lot of metal on here. Yes. And it seems like for the structural integrity of the robot, we're still using metals and you know metal fasteners. Yes. But for these blocks right here to kind of help the metal go together so you're not yeah. crushing it. And like what you talked about here, 3D printing is a great example of, of a manufacturing technique to be able to use for this, right? Yes. Right, because the whole thing can't be metal, no. That would just be so cost prohibitive, right? Exactly, and we have weight limits. Like this year, our robot is about 88 pounds. This, this, guy, this robot right here, 88 pounds. 88 pounds. Jeez. We can't be over like 120 something. So having the whole robot would be metal, would be too expensive and also way too heavy. So 3D printing, light, efficient, kind of cheap, I suppose. Oh, look at that. And they're working on the robot. I, I mean, I know I'm taking you away from your team. I'm really sorry That's about all right. that. And really, I mean, I'm sure the audience could hear, like, it is an active pit. People are cutting and, and fastening and yeah. testing and calibrating. Our last competition, we had the team right next to us. They had like a saw and they were working Just on the robot. constant. Road. Yeah. Constant. Jeez. Okay, what's happening right now? Is all something right. going on? So I believe what it looks like here is they are reattaching the radio. 
And so when we are driving on the field, we have we use Xbox controllers. It's oh, that, sweet. Yeah, okay. it's actually really cool. So we have to have these radios so that way, you know, the signal goes so that people can control the robot. Sometimes they'll even issue it out at competition. Well, I, because I, they want to make sure everybody has can play together without interfering, right? Yes. It, a lot of volunteers for FIRST Robotics, right? Right. It's mostly run by volunteers. Really? Yeah. Well, and then you as a team are reliant on, I would, I would, I would assume parents are probably helping with funds, but I mean, you yes. do have a list of sponsors there that are helping as well, right? We're a community team, meaning like we're not based out of any school district. We sort of have to rely on people just stepping, stepping up and volunteering to have new members. But I think having smaller teams is generally more beneficial because that means everyone gets to try a little bit of everything and you, you learn so much more. I, I love that. I love that, that, how the community comes together to kind of really make this happen. Another great thing about FIRST is that sometimes like teams will just walk up to you and be like, hey, we really need this kind of screw. Do you have that? And they'll just give it to you. Part of the community, the cooperation of this, exactly. right? Exactly. So I think there have been times in the past where we other teams have 3D printed stuff for us. Uh, we may have a printer for your booth. We'll see what we can do. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Ella, I know time is uh, is critical here. Look in the camera and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about your FIRST Robotics team. All right. Uh, so you can go to FRC Inspires or firstinspires.org to sort of find out more about the community as well. And we have a website, 5813 something or other. It will be in the description. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up here. I know you got right. a lot to do. Thanks for watching. You made Fire awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in. And first, robotics, all the things. And as always, high five. Y'all want? Oh, sure. Yeah. All right, get back to work. I all promise. Right.